We are continuing on in our uh, lesson of analytic ge geometry, and this time we'll be focusing on domain and range. And again, this should all be review. So what do we mean by domain and range? Domain is basically uh, what can we put inside a function, the input. And the range is the output. What do we get out from a function? And there are some limiting factors that you need to, you need to keep in mind for both domain and range. So for example, for domain, what should you look out for? First of all, uh, there can't be a zero in the denominator. Right, so you need to look out for fractions. No zero in the denominator. And also, there can't be uh, negative roots. No negative roots. So if uh, there is anything, any number that you put into a function that would make either of these true, then that would uh, be outside the domain. And one more thing that you need to consider is the trigonometric functions. Because trigonometric functions have specific domain and range as well, uh, specifically tangent, for example. Inside tangent, tangent is the it's the sine sine function over the cosine function. So whatever number that would make the cosine function zero is going to be undefined for tangent because that would make the denominator zero. So you also need to keep that in mind. So these three are the uh, are the big three things that you need to look out for. Uh, when looking for limiting factors of the domain. And for the range, you have to look out for even powers. Because if you have a function where it's raised to an even power, it means that the outcome is always going to be positive. So if there's an even power, or if the the term with an even power is, I guess, the only only term in the function, then you can say that the range would be all positive numbers. You can't get a negative number. Uh, y equals x squared would be one example. You can't get a negative output. No matter what number you put in for x, y is always going to be positive. Okay, and another thing is roots here. So again, if you're looking at this kind of function, then you can't get a negative value for y here square root of x, and this is just looking at the positive roots, you're just looking at the positive roots for x, then no matter what you put in for x, you're always going to get a positive number. Okay, so these things are what you need to look out for when determining the domain and range of a function. Now how can you understand this graphically? So these tests that I've just, or the checklist that I've just drawn, uh, were the tests that you could do algebraically, but graphically speaking, can you deduce the domain and range of a function if I draw something on uh, this coordinate plane? So for example, if I have a function that looks like that, can you deduce the domain and range for this one? So when you're talking graphically, the domain is the input, right? Or it's basically the x values. X values and the range is what you get out as the y values. So looking at the x axis, looking at the x axis, this is for the domain by the way, looking at the x axis, are there any points on the x axis uh, which this graph can't reach? For example, this point right here, can the graph reach this point? Yeah, it re reaches right here. 
How about another point here? Do you think the graph would reach this point? Well, there's an arrow here, and if it keep, keeps on going that way, it, it looks like it's eventually going to reach that point. And you can reason the same thing on the positive side. Will the graph ever, graph ever reach this x value? And it reaches that value right there. So this looks like it's going to reach all the x values. So domain would be all all real numbers for this one. How about for the range? For the range, we're looking at the y values. Are there any points on this uh, y, or I guess any level of y, which this graph can't reach? And similarly to x, it looks like it's going to reach all the points. It reaches this point right here. It reaches the negative point here, right here. So the graph seems to reach all the y values as well. So the range will also be all real numbers. So this is how you can kind of analyze the domain and range looking at the graph. Um, for the domain, you can look at the x-axis and see does, it, does the graph reach all the x values. And for the range, you can look at the y-axis and think does the graph reach all the y values. So let me give you an example of a graph that doesn't actually reach all x or y values. So if I have a coordinate plane like this, and I have a graph like this, okay, does this reach all the x values? And even though this uh, arrow seems to be going up this way, it is actually moving this way as well. So it is going to eventually reach all the x values. But for the y value, you can see that it's only going to reach the y values that is up from here, or that are up from here. It's never going to reach these y values because the graph is not going down. Okay, So we see that this graph is limited in, it, in its range, and that it's not going to be able to uh, cover all these negative values. And similarly, we can say for graphs that look like this, does this graph reach all the x values? It actually just, it's just heading towards the positive values of x. Right? So it reaches all the positive values of x, but it, it never actually reaches the negative values of x. This graph is actually y equals the square root of x. And this explains if you put a negative x in here, that's going to give you a non-real answer. So that uh, graphically you can see that you can't really, the graph can never actually uh, take in the negative values here. And similarly for y, it is only on the positive side of y. It doesn't actually ever go to the negative side of y. And again, if you look at the graph of this equation, or if you look at the equation itself, you can see that this can never become negative. No matter what you put in for x, you're always going to get a positive y. So that's why this graph is limited in both its domain and its range. Now, one last thing I would like to mention that concerns a domain and a range is what's called the asymptote. I'm sure you've heard of asymptotes before. If you have a graph that looks like this, and you see that it seems to reach this line, uh, this graph seems to be getting closer and closer to this line here, but it's never actually reaching that line. And similarly on this side, this graph is getting closer and closer to this side, but it's never actually reaching this one. And the reason is, this is actually the graph of uh, y equals 1 over x. And as the x, the absolute value of x becomes smaller and smaller, as the absolute value of x becomes smaller and smaller, this is going to become bigger and bigger. Right? It's never actually going to equal 
or I should say it, it, you can't actually put in a zero here because that would make it undefined, but you can keep uh, putting in smaller and smaller numbers. So that's why you can get closer and closer to zero, but it, you can't actually equal zero. And if you plug in values that are closer and closer to zero or a really small number in here, the whole thing is going to be very large. So that's why it's going up here. It's going to become a very big positive number. And if you put in a really, really small uh, or absolute value wise, a very, very small negative number is going to become a very large negative number. So that's why it's heading down rapidly on this side. How about uh, these, these sides right here? It also seems to reach this line, but it never actually uh, reaches that line. It gets closer and closer to that line. And let's see if we can analyze that using this equation here. If you put in an x value that's really, really big. So again, if the x becomes very, very large in terms of absolute value, the whole thing is going to get smaller and smaller. But even if it's going to get smaller and smaller, so it's getting smaller and smaller, it's never actually going to equal zero. You can't make this equal to zero. So that's why it's reaching this red line, which is the point when x becomes zero or when y becomes zero, but it never actually equals that line. And same on the negative side. If you put in a really, really large absolute value wise, a really large negative number, it's going to become a really, 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 really small number. And it's going to get closer and closer to zero, but it's never actually going to equal zero. You can't make this equal to zero. So that's why it approaches this red line, but it doesn't actually equal that red line. So in this case, we call both the red line here. This red line would be the horizontal asymptote because it's the horizontal line and the graph is reaching that line but it doesn't actually equal that line. And similarly, this blue line would be called the vertical asymptote. And again, the graph is reaching this blue line, but it doesn't actually equal that blue line.